You're listening to Linked AM. Tell your story on Linked Live and get noticed. You're listening to Carl Wolfenden on the Business Class Show and is not always affiliated with the guests and the topics discussed. Any financial statements are the opinions of the individual and you should seek professional advice before making any decisions. Upgrade your listening to Business Class, the show that puts you in the big leather comfy seats. So sit back and enjoy our take on the trending business issues of the week. Howdy, folks. Here he is, the Texas Brit, the guy with the stiff upper lip, filling his 10-gallon hat and his cowboy boots, Carl Wolfenden. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Linked AM on Business Clash News. And, oh, my goodness, I have been waiting for this conversation um, ever since I got this book I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, you know, as everybody knows, I've had like a, a plethora of experiences and I'm putting my memoirs out on uh, on LinkedIn as well. I don't know if anybody's interested in reading it, but, you know, it's my history of what I've been doing the past 30 years. Oh, my goodness. I uh, promise you it's uh, it's not that uh, boring read, but it's, uh, it just gives you an outline of, of what I've been doing. But, you know, as a kid, and it's a little bit of a secret about me, when I was a kid, I used to take things apart. I never knew how to put them back together again, but I always took them apart. And I loved looking at how things work together. And I think really I'm a I'm an engineer designer inside a shell of a sales guy. But uh, you know, it's one of those things. Um, I didn't go down that path. But what I did do a few weeks ago, if you remember, I had a guy on um, really, really great conversation, Bruce Mao, um, and we were talking about um, you know go live together, which is an initiative with Freeman. And of course, uh, we talked about how in this new sort of way of working, etc., uh, things are changing in the event and live space. And that led me to uh, sort of listen to what Bruce was, uh, Bruce was saying um, about a book that he's actually just written and released, and it's called MC24, and that stands for Massive Change 24. And um, Bruce, I know you're, you're, you're here on the studio line as such, on the video line. Thanks for joining me again. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I mean... Uh, as we talked about on the last, I, I got I got the book. There it is. There's the book, and uh, I've I've just been reading it all weekend, and it's a great book. I mean, God, ten years uh, that you took to do this, and and it's just a combination of wonderful, wonderful um, sort of thoughts that you've had over those those past years, and it's quite funny because um, when when I started looking at the the book, the first time I opened it, you know. I saw these like little round sort of, I thought they were stickers, which are thought prompters. Uh, and, and it really goes through and it makes you, even before you start reading the content, it, must, it makes you start thinking about those. Uh, and one of, the, one of the things you said, we've got to start thinking about the new, the, the, the new way of doing things, the new way of designing things. When you were thinking about this ten years ago, you didn't realize that we were going to go through this <laughs> this experience now of no. actually having to change our, our way of thinking. I mean, I couldn't have predicted uh, quite what is happening, although many people have, uh, by the way. Uh, but what happened for me was really that um, I was made an honorary royal designer for industry in London as part of the RSA. Wonderful, the, the, love the it. Royal Society for the Arts. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's a very special thing. It was actually started by uh, Ben Franklin when he really? was, yeah, when he was um, ambassador to England. He wanted to bring industry and beauty together, and yep. right? he wanted artists and um, and industry to make industrial products more beautiful. Um, and so he he helped to start this uh, uh, Royal Designer for Industry uh, uh, recognition. Uh, it's only 200 people, so it's very special to be included. Um, and as part of that process, uh, the RSA sent a group of young leaders to Chicago, to our studio, to, you know, so that, you know, as part of their leadership development program. 
Um, and I showed them our work. Um, and uh, after the presentation, they said, "Wow, you're a really weird dude. What kind of what kind of, <laughs> what kind of designer are you?" Uh, and I said, "Well, I'm a designer." And they said, "Well, you're designing cities and carpets, and social movements and institutions and brands and businesses." Um, how do you do that? I mean, we think of design being defined by the product, like a graphic designer does graphics and an architect does buildings, but you're designing, you know, cities and carpets and, and social institutions. Um, how, how do you do it? And I was a little bit irritated with them. And I said, I just showed you, you should have been, you should have been paying attention. <laughs> and, um, I can just imagine you doing that. That's fantastic. <laughs> I was like, well, I, you know, what was that? I just showed you. Uh, and, they, and they said, no, you showed us the results, but you didn't actually mention at all how you're able to do this. Yep. And I realized that we didn't actually have an answer to that question. I, you know, I, I talked to my wife who I work with, BC Williams, and, and I said, you know, I really don't know how we do it. Right. <laughs> and thought, <laughs> and that it had just evolved over you know, a 25-year period, 20-year period, you know. And so I realized that I, you know, I don't know is probably not a good answer. So uh, we sat down and we said, there must be principles. Like we can't be succeeding so consistently doing excellent work on very tough problems, often where others have failed. You know, we're often called when others have failed. And, um, and I said, there must be principles to the work that we do. So we started to look at it and say, you know what, there are in fact, uh, kind of mindset principles, mindset tools um, that we can use to solve problems that we do consistently. It's not a linear process, but it's a set of concepts, um, like you say, kind of thought thought tools um, that help you do the work. And so we started to formulate that. And when we got to we got to about 24, uh, 23, 24, and, and thought, okay, you know, I, I had the idea that if I could have an hour with you, I could teach you one of these principles. Okay. I could really give you an experience so that you would walk away holding that tool. Um, and I thought, well, if I can do one in one hour, I can do, I can do 24 in 24 hours. There you go. <laughs> uh, and so we set up a workshop in Australia called 24 Hours to Massive Change. Um, and people's heads explode. <laughs> it was... Uh, it was far too much, right? Because the principles are they—they they kind of reorient your thinking. They—they they change the way that you see the world. And when you do that, you know most people cannot absorb more than one or two of them, right? In a, in a day. And uh, and we realized that you know we we laid all twenty four on them. In, in, <laughs> people were walking out and they going, "Oh my goodness!" I mean, people were crying. It was. <laughs> It was Sweating. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was amazing. It was awesome yep. in a certain way. I mean, it was life changing for some people. Yep. Uh, and, and sometimes good. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, it was too much. Um, and so that started a process to really say how do we, how do we give these principles to other people, and how do we put them together in something that you know other, someone else can consume. So so what 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 is so you know I'm I'm a guy that that will shut myself away. I'll get onto my uh, graphic design piece and I'll start designing stuff, et cetera, just as a, as a, as a hobby. Okay. But I know that once I start doing that, I can get lost for hours, <laughs> you know, do, right. doing different things and trying different ways of looking at it. And, uh, but it then helps me, you know, with my business because it, you know, I can, I can actually do things myself if I, if I want to, cause I enjoy doing it and I can get lost in it. So, what I suppose I'm asking is massive change is not about just being a designer. It's about everybody in business that, that needs to look at their, their workflow. Is that, am I reading that right? Because that's what I got from the book is it's not just about designers because it's very helpful for designers because they have a very sort uh -huh. of um, specific way of thinking. But for, for people like myself where I, I know I want to change my business, but I just don't know how to do it. And I, is that am I am I thinking right? Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, we uh, we really developed it as a program of design for non-designers. Okay. Yeah. Now, of course, if you're a designer, this will uh, accelerate your work, and yep. it will expand it to really think 
holistically and comprehensively about the problems that you're working on. But for everyone else, for, for entrepreneurs, business leaders, managers, uh, it's really uh, a way of uh, getting the, the, the impact of design and a way of thinking about design uh, and how it can be applied to your business uh, and how, how, can, how it can be applied to your enterprise, really. Like any, any enterprise, whether it's an organization, a city, a group, uh, a business, a brand, um, is a designed outcome. Things are either accidental or they're designed. So you either choose chance or you choose to design. Now, once you choose to design, can you use principles to advance your work? Yes, you can. Uh, and that's really what this is about. And, you know, when, when this comes from a book that we did about 15 years ago now called Massive Change. Uh, and that book really was about this kind of transformation that was that we saw beginning to happen. You know, we saw a movement uh, forming where people were beginning to take on the challenges that we face and really change everything. Now we're at a point where we are urgently, urgently needed to change practically everything we do. So almost everything we do is done in an old way. It doesn't... It's not designed for the future. It's, it's uh, stealing life from future generations. Um, and we, we imagine that somehow the world is limitless and we can just you know, use it up uh, you know, indefinitely. Well, you, you talk about in the book, you, you say, um, if we design, if we own nature, as I'm, I'm quoting you here, I love how you so, talk about party like there's no tomorrow because that's what we seem to be doing and if we can change that how can we how can we change a, a sustainable planet i mean is 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 it just fundamental things we need to change it's a really important question that um that you know i've been struggling with for 30 years i mean the and i realized at some point that doing it the the you know using admonition you know like pointing at people and scowling and saying, you know, get out of your car uh, has not worked. You know, we've, uh, we have, um, you know, we've been at that, we've been at that business, you know, for 70 years, you know, um, Silent Spring happened in 1962. Rachel Carson published Silent Spring. Every single year since then, we added more internal combustion engines to our roadways. Yep. Not yep. once, not one year out of the last 70, uh, have we said, let's take that number down a notch. Right. We've added more internal combustion engines every year for 70 years, and we continue to do it. So w the idea that somehow we're going to, um, you know, magically be better people is, is really not plausible. We need to change the way that we think about design. We need to make the new, you know, uh, life-giving, intelligent, beautiful way of living that is that is sustainable, that is you know compatible with life. We need to make that the new normal and not not an exception to the rule. Well, I think you know we we talk about. I mean, you, you, we're touching on a nerve here that is very passionate to me because I, I, I used to get involved with the Texas Trees Foundation. Um, I, I love nature. I, I love the environment. I've, I'm actually starting a whole community about how we can start to uh, create that. So you're touching on a nerve here that is really passionate to me because the thing is that there's a lot of corporations that will that will say they're doing things, but they never change what they do. They just uh, put a banner or a headline or whatever, but they need to start thinking about how fundamentally they can change the way they do things. Um, and I think you know this is what we're talking about, isn't it? It's about looking at what you're doing today, how it, it, it's affecting the environment and affecting customers, you know, yeah. and and the outputs. But if you just did simple changes using the principles that you talk about in your book, you could actually, you know, um, transform uh, a whole uh, sort of outlook and, and, as you say, sustain the world, which is yeah. uh, which is a bit a big a big statement to say, but it's 
I think it's just simple, small steps that people should take, uh, and mm-hmm. and they should read the book because they, you've got the principles in there. Yeah, I mean, if you think about what what has to happen, what is going to happen, whether we like it or not, is we are going to change everything, and that change is either going to be produced by us, or it's going to happen to us. Yeah, and, and that's the reality of this century. So we are either going to get ahead of it and design the change that we want to see in the world, or that change is going to happen to us in unpredictable and I think often violent ways. Well, the thing is you, when you do it that way, you are out of control. If you, if you design something, you said it earlier in the, in the conversation, if you design something, you're in control because you're putting all the pieces in place. You're designing it. You have an outcome in the, the, in, in your mind and you're designing it that way. But if you let it happen to you, oh my goodness, it's chaos. And yeah. that's not what we want. We don't want chaos. We need to be in control as humans. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you think about what's happening now, it's happening to us. Mm-hmm. And you have to ask yourself, how does that feel? Yeah. How does that feel? And you know, where where we fail to design, we design for failure. Oh. Where where we where we fail to imagine a future, um, uh, you know, we 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 design for failure, and we're living through a design failure right now. You know, we've simply failed to design the response to this crisis. Uh, even though we had a head start, we were we were out ahead of this several years ago, and we dismantled that that design solution, and we're suffering the consequences. Right, and I think you know the the, the moral of this is is we got to start planning. We got to start planning, putting a design in place, and, and then implementing the principles that you're talking about for sure. I think a lot of people equate uh, sustainability, you know, unfortunately, with having less. With being less, having less, doing less, and in fact, um, you know, my my proposition is that the future, if we have one, will be orange, not green. That is carrot, not stick. Like the only way out of here in a positive way is by design, by imagining a future that we can we can experience, where life is at the center, not humans, but life. We have to we have to reimagine our cosmology. I mean, we were you know in our in our uh, tradition in the West we were given nature, and we had dominion over it, and so we set ourselves above and and beyond the natural world as a special case. You know, the science says that's actually not how it works. <laughs> you know, I had the extraordinary experience of going into the jungle with E.O. Wilson who is probably the best life scientist working today. And Wilson said, um, rock is slow life and life is fast rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was such a brilliant idea. And essentially he said, there's only one thing on the planet, it's life. And life has an experiment going with form and we're one of those forms. We're over 99% the same as the DNA of bonobos. So the idea that, that we're somehow separate from the rest of life um, is really a false concept that allows us to, to, you know, to treat it like it's not us and, and do the worst damage possible. Um, and that has to change. We have to rethink you know, where we are in the universe, which is one of the reasons that it's, you know, this, these these principles can be really, you know, mind-bending experiences. Well, yeah, because- but what I got out of it, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, and again, you may differ on this, but I think, you know, we were given that extra um, piece of life where we have intelligence and we can control our decisions and we can decide what we want to do. So therefore, we are caretakers as well of life around us because nature nature will will – Nature will always win. I mean, you know, you, you you watch these shows where you know life after people type of thing, where people are taken uh-huh. out of the equation. <laughs> Nature just takes over. It, it destroys the concrete. It, it it pulls everything down, and the trees th- uh, trees thrive, uh, and and everything. So we as people 
have to be caretakers. And therefore, if we've got the, that responsibility, we have to start putting design and thought and planning into play now. Mm. I, I've always said we need to stop the wheel. Unfortunately, you can't stop the wheel because we'd all float away off into <laughs> that, that being Earth. Uh, you can't stop the wheel. But you have to start somewhere. And unfortunately, you're right. People think that uh, sustainability is less uh, and companies go, you know what, I, it's, it's too hard for me to change. And that mentality, I think, in the West has been sort of, okay, well, we'll just keep doing these other things that are going to make it easy for us. And unfortunately, easy is not always good. <laughs> but I think, I mean, I think I want to make the case for easy that, that what I'm – committed to and you know one of the principles is design the new normal yep and it really s starts from the premise that you know still most design today is about the kind of special case something that is fancy expensive rare you know it's a kind of special thing um, and so a lot of design and design and designers are really kind of oriented to that kind of special thing um, what we need to be looking at instead is the normal. How do we design the normal behavior? So a lot of the kind of pioneers and innovators, the people in the environmental movement, um, the harder it is, the more they like it. Right? Like when I get when I hear the words massive change, I get excited. Most people hold on to their wallet and back out of the room. <laughs> right. Like they're not excited by massive change. Right. Um, and so part of our work has to be to design the bridge. Uh, to design the bridge from the kind of innovation realm to everyone else, to make the new way of living also the most beautiful, the most compelling, the sexiest, the most engaging, the most exciting things, not sacrifice, not punishment, but really, you know, how can we make an intelligent, equitable, sustainable world also the coolest world possible? I, I love that. I love that. I, I I get wrapped up in our conversations, Bruce, because I, I'm just looking at the clock now, and unfortunately, we're running out of time. But you know, um, you know, this is it's always a great pleasure to to have you on the show because you know we we start talking about different things. We started talking about you know um, you know go live together, and and now we're talking about your book MC24. And now we've gone and sort of talked about the principles that they really impact on. So. Bruce, thank you for joining me. In summary, just so before you go, uh, what is it that you want the, the, the viewers, the readers, the listeners out there to really take from what you're trying to achieve with the book? Just in summary. Um, I think that uh, there are two big ideas. Uh, one is you have to start from optimism. Right? What we've accomplished already is absolutely extraordinary. I mean, you know, the problems we now have are success problems, not failure problems. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the problems we have because we're 8 billion people, because we solved so many problems. And the second thing is that we, since we designed it, we can redesign it. You can change the world. You know, you can use these principles, apply them to your life, your work, your business, and change the world. I love that, Bruce. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me this morning because it is, as, a, as always, as I say, it's a great pleasure to speak with you. Um, I'm sure there are going to be things that uh, I'm going to be reading in the book. You've got to go and get it. I'll get all the details um, on, the, uh, on the website and the link to how you can get the book. And so I um, appreciate you joining me this morning, Bruce, because I know that you're very busy and it's, uh, it's good to have you. Thank you, Carl. Delightful to see you. Of course, that was Bruce Mao, of course, from uh, uh, the, the, well, we started talking the conversation, as I say, a few weeks ago uh, about his work with Freeman and uh, Get Live Together. But, um, you know, I got to admit, that book that he has written, um, I have, I only got it, I think, on Saturday. And I've gone through most of it. And it's a big book. It's a big book. And there's great, great principles. So please uh, check it out on, on the website. I've got a link on the uh, in this post below me. And uh, go, and, go and find out how you can have massive change in your life and in your business. So thanks for joining me this morning. And uh, as I always say, go out there, have some fun, make some money, but be safe as well. Be careful.
Bye-bye.